Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me in the locker room on this Wednesday, January 17th. I'm Alan Locker. Daytime TV fans will recognize Tala Ash from her role as Amira Ali Aziz on As the World Turns. For five years, Tala was a series regular on DC's Legends of Tomorrow, playing Zari Tomaz, the first Muslim American superhero on television. She has also had major arcs on Smash and American Odyssey on NBC. She has guest starred on 30 Rock, Lauren Order CI, Lauren Order, and she has a recurring role on the upcoming Max series, The Girls on the Bus. Tala won an Obie Award and was nominated for a Drama Desk and Lucia Lertel for her performance in the Pulitzer Prize winning play, English at the Atlantic Theater Company. English and Tala are coming to Broadway this December. She also starred in the critically acclaimed Vagrant Trilogy at the Public Theater. It is my pleasure to welcome for the first time to the locker room, Tala Ash. Hey, Tala. Hi, Alan. How are you? I'm well. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. Let's let's start at the beginning. Um, you were born in Iran, but you grew up in Columbus, Ohio, uh, but moved there when you were nine months old. What was uh, Columbus like as a child? <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it was an interesting experience, uh, lovely in a lot of ways. And Columbus has changed a lot from, from when I was a child, but... Um, uh, you know, in certain ways, it was difficult to be a, a little um, Iranian girl uh, in in that environment. And I think a lot of my youth was spent sort of trying to assimilate as much as I could, um, while also, you know, very much remaining rooted to my culture. My parents are both artists and musicians in, in addition to their professional careers and um, you know, they they were always really wonderful in terms of connecting me to not only the art and culture very rich from Iran, but also, um, you know, there's a small community of Persians in Columbus. So I, you know, I grew up with some Persian friends. I used to go to take um, a Persian language class every Saturday, which I like hated, but also kind of loved. And uh, so, yeah, it was an it was an interesting um it was an interesting uh, life of sort of uh, duality in, in do Columbus. Do you speak it today fluently? I do. Um, I would say I'm not very articulate. I understand it really, really well. Um, but I'm a little embarrassed at like my limited vocabulary. You know, um, I'd love to work on that. <laughs> I tend to work on that. I keep saying that year after year, but um yeah, certainly I don't. I, I'm I'm sort of not as good at expressing myself in Persian as English. I assume mom and dad chose Columbus knowing there was a little community there. Actually, no. Um, when they came over, they came over during the Iran-Iraq War and they um, were both pursuing their architecture degrees in Iran and they came over to... Um, look at uh, architecture master's programs in the States. So actually initially we moved to uh, Florida because University of Florida had admitted them, then to Georgia for a couple of months because Georgia Tech had admitted them, and then finally ended up at Ohio, you know, in Columbus because of Ohio State University. So they liked the program at Ohio State University, and obviously that's a huge university that attracts a lot of immigrants of all kinds, but um, a lot of the Iranian community in Columbus is because of OSU. I think my husband's very close friend is running the architecture oh. department at Ohio State now. Oh. He and his wife, who are both architects, live in Brooklyn and he travels back and forth for Ohio. That's incredible, wow. Yeah, that's isn't that? Cool. Yeah, that, that's that, that, cool. that, that's, that's wild, I love that. Um, so, so interesting. Um, I love this. I read an interview where you said, I will forever be in awe of my badass parents who uprooted themselves and their newborn during a war to come to a country where they had to speak a new language, learn a new culture and build their lives from scratch. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, that that feeling of, you know, their badassness? <laughs> um yeah. I mean, uh, th that says a lot of it uh, with, with um, uh, a lot of details left out, obviously. Um, 
Yeah, they're incredible. I, you know, I think I'll actually spend my whole life trying to understand in some ways what their experience of life has been to, to leave. I mean, just, you know, imagine it for yourself, imagine like for, for your, your viewers, like to, to leave the country that you've known, uh, you know, at 25 or 30 and come to a totally new country uh, under under duress, of course, and then like add a baby in the mix. That baby, by the way, has colic and is like right. not a good baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not only to you know survive that, but to thrive and you know create this other this dual identity that you know brings forward obviously that first 25, 30 years of your life, but. Also, you know, you're building a completely new life. And actually, the play you mentioned, English, uh, that won the Pulitzer that we'll be doing on Broadway, um, that is a really, really special play. It talks about, um, it deals with a bunch of students who are taking the TOEFL exam, which the TOEFL exam is an exam that uh, actually anybody has to take. It's, um, it's English as a second, second language. So you have to pass that basically to be admitted into, I think to this day, to be admitted into any um, university program here in the States. So my parents did that. Um, and what English talks about, which I always think about in terms of my parents and was, has been very interesting in doing that play and like you know, processing this stuff is what you lose when you're speaking a language that is not your language of origin. Like, you know, things that we take for granted, like the ability to be funny, you know, mm -hmm. and on purpose, uh, not just, you know, of course, people sort of laughing at you for your accent, et cetera, and making assumptions about your intelligence, you know, for instance, but also like that, like what piece of you do you lose or you know becomes kind of obfuscated because it's not your mother tongue um so i think about that a lot i, I think about um you know now they've spent a greater part of their life in the states than in iran and iran has changed very 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 much since they left it and that um that like hybrid nature I think in I think the positive spin on on it would be that they're sort of superheroes. They like they get to kind of move between two worlds in a way. But also, I think there's a lot of loss. And I mean, I'm projecting this onto them, but so it may not be true. But um, I I would say in general, like the immigrant experience is that there's there is loss, you know, inherently um, by leaving by leaving the place that you're from. So anyways, yeah. they're wonderful. I love them. <laughs> well, I, I, I can relate heavily. You know, my parents were Holocaust survivors and did not leave during, you know, my dad's family moved here first. And then my mother came at age 21, left her mom behind and truthfully learned English watching As the World Turns and Guiding Light. Wow, amazing. <laughs> you know, so like, you know, I get it. You know, she had an accent all of her life, you know? Um, yeah. So that- My it, parents, I, I, they have like tapes of me from when I was like three years old singing the Three's Company tune because that's what they would watch to learn English. I'd be like, come on, knock on our door. Oh Which my like God. A little three-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is so great. <laughs> Connection yeah. to TV, seriously. It, yeah, it no, leaves a lasting, yeah. lasting impact. Um, speaking of the arts, where did the love of arts and acting for you stem from? I know you, I mean, you said your parents were very heavily into it. Yeah, I sort of grew up, um, they're both musicians. Uh, they had like a Persian traditional music band that they were a part of growing up. I grew up playing violin. Um, my dad is a visual artist, like his side of the family, they're, they're kind of all incredible artists and caricaturists, cartoonists, um, painters. So I, I think some of that is sort of in the, in the blood, um, but nobody's an actor that I know of. Um, so I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure where I got that from. Um, but I was very much encouraged towards the arts always. 
And then I, I was going to say, you know, that was going to be a question until you talked about them being in the arts, if they were supportive, I, I assume they very much were. Yeah, they were. I think in, in that way, they sort of don't fit that typical immigrant parent idea that some people might have. Um, they were very, they were kind of incredibly supportive to a degree that like, I think I wouldn't have been if I had one <laughs> child in America. Um, yeah. Even when I was like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to forgo all these like prestigious colleges to go to acting conservatory, but they were, um, they were wonderful and in, in supporting me. And I had a teacher in high school who started out as my um, literature teacher and then drama. And I was just, I was one of these guys who was just like trying to get as many extracurriculars as I could so that it looked good on my Harvard application. Like I was an annoying, like wanted to get a hundred percent, would fight for two percentage points, like just the worst. Um, and I, you know, took a drama class because I was like, oh, I haven't taken drama yet. And I remember we were doing some doing some scene work and I was watching other people doing it. And I was like, oh, I think I can, I think I am, I like see what they're missing. I'm going to, I'm going to do it now. And, you know, in my mind, this has become like a much more dramatic thing than it obviously was. But I remember just getting up there and, and speaking the words of the scene and like, just felt like the room got quiet. And it, I felt this thing in me, which was a unique combination of oh, wow, this is really, really interesting to me. And I think there's like a lot of room to grow. There's a lot to learn here. And I'm genuinely interested, not for the grade, not for the application, but uh, I'm genuinely interested. And then dang it, I was hooked. And that teacher to this day is a dear friend of mine. He became my mentor. Um, I did a summer program at Carnegie Mellon that kind of taught mm -hmm. me what it was to audition for acting conservatories. And I ended up going to Boston University, which was, um, you know, a great program. Uh, and then I was sort of fully, fully immersed in, in the acting world from that point on. You, you yeah, saved me asking you the question about mentors. I assume that gentleman was. Uh, gentleman, I think, right? You said... Yeah. 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 Um, Carnegie Mellon. I mean, did you know at the time who had come out of that? Do you remember? I did. I did. I, I did. Um, it's and quite, quite a list. Yes, quite a list, um, including actually my husband. My husband ended up going to Carnegie Mellon. I didn't know him obviously um, at the time. If I'm not mistaken, Christopher Goutman. Oh, that's right. That's and right. Tamara Tooney, who was on World Turns. Yeah, there's, um, there's, and there's quite a few. And then Maura West from World uh, Turns. Van? To... Was Van Carnegie Mellon? He might have been. Yeah, I think he oh, was. Maura Wait, West was right? your school, Boston U. Yes, I think that's right. I should know more. I'm pretty sure Van was was Carnegie Mellon. He might have. I need to, I need to look at that. Um, um, but yes, lots of really great, great actors. Carnegie Mellon, he did. Um, yeah. But... But Boston University, Moore West, um, and Cynthia Watchos from Guiding Light as well. What, yeah, yeah. What did Boston, because I've heard great things about BU. What was that experience like for you? I mean, it was wild. It was a wild, it's a wild thing to do, a conservatory program when you're 18 years old. Um, I don't know that in hindsight, um, Listen, I'm glad I did it. I, to this day, the most important people in my life, my dearest friends I met doing that program, but you're so young and green and I, I, I just don't know. I think it maybe would have been better if I had gone to a, you know, liberal arts school for four years and, and then gone to a you know master's program for acting, but you know uh, I I did get a very good education. I had um, some great teachers, but yeah, it was um, you know looking back, it was it was it's a sort of odd, it's a very odd college experience, especially in like under the umbrella of Boston University, which is a huge university. There's a College of Fine Arts, and then the you know, school of theater arts. We were this like little tiny program. And now I think when Maura and Cynthia might've gone there, the conservatory might not have existed. Yeah, possibly. I'm not, 
I, I'm not sure because I kind of feel like that. Yeah, I also don't know what it is now, but you know, all things considered, I wouldn't change anything. I had a lot of, you know, really wonderful teachers. I have things that I still think about from, you know, that I learned there. Um, but it, it's it's an odd it's an odd way to spend four years of of college for sure. But that's pretty great if you're you know today in in the work you do thinking of those things that yeah. definitely it had a great impact. Yeah. And it was, you know, it was like teachers, man, wonderful teachers are God's gift. And I had a few of those at BU that whose words I still think about, you know, they haunt me in a really good way. <laughs> I love that. I think, yeah. you know, you're right. I mean, impactful teachers, their impact is life-changing. Yeah. Um, 2008 as the world turns comes along what do you remember about uh, hearing about this role and what drove you to want to, you know, go for it? Gosh, I, I have to preface by saying that my memory is very fuzzy, but this is this is what I remember. Um, uh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the early days I had graduated from from BU and I was in the city and um I think I had heard of, you know, obviously friends of mine. I remember there was a girl who was a class above me at BU who wasn't on As the World Turns, but was on one of the other shows. And I was like, oh, that's like a thing that people do. That'd be really what a great way to like kind of, you know, learn the ropes. Um, and so I remember I auditioned a few times, I think for Bob Lambert. I'm really pulling names out of Bob's the air. Bob's at ABC or was it yes. ABC? Yes, yeah. I remember auditioning for Bob and I th I think I had a under five on One Life to Live. Does that sound yeah. right? Yeah. On One Life to Live. So, so that was sort of my introduction. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm on TV. Can you believe it? You know? <laughs> and I think I, I think I like pissed off the costume designer because I was like, I don't like these earrings. I'm not going to wear them. And they were like, you can't take the earrings off. <laughs> That's my memory. Um <laughs> But then when uh, As the World Turns came along, I was like, oh, this is sort of a longer contract. That's interesting. And I actually don't have really a memory about the audition, but I just remember, it's almost like I just remember being in those studios and Do you recall if you had to screen test? Because if it was a... I'm sure I did did but and I and I think I remember auditioning for who was the boss you you would know better than Chris me. Chris Goutman Chris yes Chris um, Mary Chris. Clay Boland was a casting director and Lamont yes Lamont Craig these are yeah. all coming back to me a little bit um yeah Mary yeah uh yes I, I I must have auditioned once if not twice and then, yeah, I had the job and I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, what is this part? What? I, I, I think, you know, the experience of As the World Turns, first, I want to say I learned a lot. Secondly, the people that were there um, who were sort of my age at that time, I mean, to this day, like, look how they are thriving. And more importantly, they were wonderful people. Um people I'm, you know, still friends with. Uh, so it was a really positive experience in a lot of ways. Where it was hard was I don't think I like fully took in the scope of the character that I was playing. And, um, and you know, it was a really great learning experience in terms of, you know, that fine line between I'm an actor and I'm here to take the words that someone has written and make them as, you know, real and authentic as possible. Uh, that plus, I started to understand what it was to be an actor that looks like this and it has Middle Eastern descent and what accurate representation, how that's part of, that's part of my job, actually. It's my responsibility. Um, and I was very, very, very young and I, and I, didn't really, I think, know what to advocate for and like how to advocate for myself and for the character and for the accuracy of the story that they were telling. It, that's interesting. I love how you say that because there are yourself, 
the character and representation and all of that is really important. And I would assume, I, I don't know a hundred percent, you were one of the first on daytime. I don't I, know. I think if... that's right. Again, I, you know, I think I was sort of naive, not fully understanding the, the, the impact of that or, you know, the character I was playing, she wore a hijab, even that, like that, I think was as far as I know, the first character. Um, and whenever you're doing what I've learned is whenever you're doing first, mm. there has to be like such a sensitivity and attention to nuance. If I'm involved, like that's, that's become very, 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 very important to me. And, um, you know, as recently as today, I sent my manager an email about a project where I was like, I don't see enough nuance here and I don't see enough representation in the creative team to audition for this project that so I'm so it's a pass for me but at that time you know I it was you know we were taught you say yes to everything and again I'm so glad I did I really 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 learned a lot and loved everyone there but ultimately I you know and also like uh the schedule was brutal like I mean the the speed with which you shoot these things I mean my goodness I remember telling um Jake and Van I would I would be like talking about a scene that we had shot that morning and they were like girl you gotta move on like it's done like you don't get to do it again like it's done um yeah that's the biggest lesson a lot of people learn like you know Goes in, it's out. You can't go back. Yeah. You go in, you kind of say it like 85%, we're moving on. And I was like, wait, wait, you know, it's like a real perfectionist gene in me. So um, <laughs> that was also interesting. So anyways, all that to say there, I, I recognize that there wasn't um, time and I think also interest, uh, not blaming anyone, but I don't think there was like interest in like getting this story of an Iraqi refugee right. And as as the world it would be different into... today i think on any show yes, I, I, because I, of yes. the, the the world we live in yes. and it you know it is such a unique opportunity to to be able to tell a story correctly and accurately because it yes, helps we've, all we've of us come who... a long way we have further to go but you know at, at the time i guess what i was experiencing as you know i i I mean, you tell me, but I think I was only there for, I was under six months, something yeah, like that. Yeah, short, short um, period of time. But as that time went on and I was living in the role, it, it I started to become more and more uncomfortable um, with, uh, with the content of the scripts and with, you know, how the character was, was being portrayed. Um and, I I yeah. totally understand. I totally understand that. And and being new, you you would be nervous to yeah. speak and up. I was very young, and and I think the reality is is that like, you know, I think they were probably like, just do your job, little girl. Like, you know, yeah. just like social media was <laughs> not where it was today. No. no. Did did you get reaction much? Do you recall hearing from? I don't. I don't. Actually, the only thing I remember, the only thing I remember from that time was like the soap magazines, like right. seeing sometimes things in there. But obviously that didn't have, um, you know, fan reaction. I obviously I think if that happened today, there would be it, it would be handled differently. There yeah. would be a different reaction. It would be a very, very, very different um, situation. But yeah, more than anything, I sort of started to understand my moral compass and mm -hmm. responsibility around my work, which I think I resented, honestly, for a long time. I was like, you know, I'm an actor. I don't want to think about this stuff. Like, this is not my job. Why do I have to also be worried about how I'm being portrayed? And it's like, actually, I think part of maturing as an actor and part of my growth as, as a person has been... Um, accepting that uh, and, you know, taking it on even, not just accepting it, taking it on and being like, oh, yeah, I can handle this and I'm happy to do it. And I'm very happy to not work because of it. If someone is not, you know, interested in 
sort of me weighing in in a way that is maybe outside the normal scope of, of an actor. And um, I'm pretty at peace with that, you know? And I think I uh, it's led me to projects and with people that like I'm a little more aligned with. And, and it's changed a lot. I've like watched, you know, through my career, my short-ish career, I've watched things change a lot. It, so it has changed a long way to go, but. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but I, I love I, that I, you, I, you see yeah. it from the start of where you entered the world, in, you know, of entertainment. Um, who took you under their wing when you got there to, you know, here you are in this new environment, the ropes. Uh, was it Marnie? Was it Van? Was it Jake? Did they help? All of them. All of them were so wonderful. I mean, um, Marnie, like, immediately was just, like, the warmest. I was like, she's so beautiful. Like, why is she so nice? You know, and she was so, she was so wonderful. Uh, Jake and Van were so, like, kind to me. Um, yeah, I really, and Justine, like, I couldn't, uh, Billy, like, Meredith, uh, Meredith and I had met one time previously on both of our first jobs, which was a safe sex PSA for MTV. <laughs> we had met there, and then we were, and then we met again at As the World Turns. And I was like, "Oh my god, our paths keep crossing in the <laughs> weird so places." Funny. Um, and so yeah, all of them. And I remember we would like we really liked each other. We would hang out. We would go out. We'd go dancing like for years, 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 years after, long after I was on the show. Um, yeah, it was really, really good group of people. I love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. Um, I had not realized until doing research that you were in one of my favorite shows, Smash. Um, <laughs> talk about that experience. Um, so excited it's coming to Broadway. Oh my God, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, was, it was so fun and, um, you know, sort of married two of my loves, which is, you know, theater and film. It was, it was just, it was such a gift to to be able to be on a TV show that was like talking about, it. even though I'm not like a musical theater person. Um, uh, obviously, I, I know about that world. So I found it to be very, very fun. Um, and also just like, shooting that show in New York and getting to do like a musical number and like meeting Angelica Houston. It was a dream. It was a total dream I know I know I was hated on on that show because I was like the other woman um but yeah it was it was wonderful yeah uh, I'm, well, I'm, let, I'm let's happy take to a have like a look. little piece of that oh god oh there we go Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> wild. I really, I mean, I mean, what they pulled off week to week was bananas, truly bananas, like unbelievable. Yeah, and it has such a cult following. And I mean, it's coming to brought like it's wonderful. I'm so thrilled to have had like a teeny part of it, you know. Uh, is musical theater uh, something you love? You know, no, it's not. Actually, I don't, um, it's not, it's not something I mostly love, but I, uh, I have appreciation for it. I'm, I'm more of a, I would say like straight play kind of person. Um, but, you know, if someone gets me tickets to smash, I'll go see that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's amazing because the music's already done, you know, like- right. Is that, sure is that what they're doing? See, I don't even know. No, I don't either. But I assume that it's got to be some of it is spectacular music that they wrote for it. Yeah. No, I mean, again, very accomplished people. Doing I mean, I was writing the, and dancing. I actually, uh, yeah. after World Turns and Gunning Light, I was working for a TV and movie tour company in New York City. We did uh, the Sex in the City tour. 
And when Smash when Smash came out, I was in the process of creating a Smash tour. Oh my god! Amazing. Like that would have been part going through New York to see where they filmed on location, but also uh, the Broadway world because sure. it had, you know it mixed all of that, and then it was canceled at the second. But it was fun yeah. just being involved a little in the with NBC Very and fun. them for that. Uh, <laughs> love that. Well. You know, here's another first, the first Muslim American superhero. What do you remember about getting the audition for Zari? And did you uh, have a say in that to some degree? Um, I remember getting the audition and I remember thinking, huh, it's like writing is good. Uh, and actually, I thought that in the audition material, it was, you know, they had listed her as, as I think they'd listed her as Muslim American superhero, but in the audition material, there wasn't anything overtly about that. And I was so used to, you know, characters who, if, if they were portraying uh, someone Muslim, they, there would be sort of like a history lesson or a preamble to uh, help you know, to, to basically like showcase it as like, this is the most important part of me. And the audition material wasn't that. So I was intrigued. Um, and then I had a really positive experience. They flew me out to LA to test for it. Um, and I remember seeing an, another girl go in who was like really cool and wearing like a leather jacket. And, and I was like, oh no, was I supposed to like, I was wearing like a hoodie and like a weird t-shirt with like a spaceship on it. And I was like, oh no, like I sort of read this character as like a little more nerdy and oh, like they, they could have just told me if they wanted a leather jacket, I have a leather jacket. So I was sort of spiraling. But then I felt, I felt pretty good in the room. And uh, I think it was Phil Clemmer was it Mark? One of the two at that point showrunner of, of the show called me and they said, you, you got the part. And I was like, what? Like, I couldn't believe it, you know? Um, and long story short on that show, I had a very different experience, which was um, Mark Guggenheim's sister-in-law, I believe uh, was, is Muslim. And this is during the Trump era. So he had like a real, um, uh, agenda is not the right word, but like he 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 was very intentional about putting this character on on television at at that moment. Um, and obviously the Muslim ban was in effect, and I think all of us sort of understood the gravity of what we were doing. I mean, even you can tell probably from the press at that time, like like this, everybody knew this was important, and I think everyone's eyes were on it in an, in a helpful way. And from the beginning, I just felt like there was a, um, there was like a striving for nuance and to integrate this character into that show in a way where like the audition sides, she was a human being. There was a lot to relate to her, uh, re relate to about her um, and her being Muslim wasn't this like weird and exotic thing. It was just a facet of her personality, a facet of her, of her being. Um, and I thought that was sort of revolutionary. And I was there for five years. And throughout, I just give um, Phil and Mark and our writers and, you know, all, all the way up to um, Greg Berlanti and CW so much credit for putting that character on television for listening to me for allowing me to be part of the conversation of, you know, the story we were telling. Um, and in a lot of ways, it, it contrasts so sharply with the beginning of my career that I felt fairly proud of, you know, I didn't always get my way. There were things that I would flag that, you know, like it's, it's not about that, but it felt like, it felt like we were all collaborating mm -hmm. and we cared about getting it right. And we cared about nuance and we cared about story and we understood again, we're doing a first and we have to do it justice. Um, and I felt like I was, I had like teammates in that, which is a very 
very wonderful feeling, you know, to, to not feel like, cause often, and I, I know I'm not alone in this, but when, when you're the only in a room, what, you know, whether you're the only Middle Eastern or Asian or black person, you feel, I think often one feels the weight of having to carry your ethnicity, your skin color, your lived experience in that room. And it's a heavy lift. It can be a really, really heavy lift sometimes. And feeling like you have allies in the room, just it just changes the texture of the work. And you were, you know, as you said, you were doing this in the Trump era, which made it more important, but not only the Trump era, the social media era. So mm -hmm. I would assume you, you absolutely heard, heard from other Muslim folks, whether they... Uh, they appreciated what you were doing on that show. Yeah, and I would say for the most part, the um, the feedback was not just, I don't wanna say like, it was positive, uh, but I think it was positive in, in terms of reflecting back accurate representation. Like I heard from so many people, like, thank you for not, you know, portraying this person as an alien in a way because that's what everyone was used to seeing like not a, like a lack of you know humanity um and uh, that I I think we really strive to um not like fall into those those traps um but I and, love that it know, was... to this day I I get I get really really moving messages from people who felt seen, you know, like seeing yourself represented is a very, 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 very powerful thing. Absolutely. And it, in an era that you mentioned where, you know, they were banning Muslims. Yeah. You know, so, you know, positive representation was needed and happy to see that. Yeah. And a lot of the people, again, to this day who send me messages, they've never met someone Muslim, but they got to feel, you know, excuse me, for better or worse, like, you know, we live in an era where we can binge television shows. So they get to like really feel like they like lived with Zari for a while and know her in this way where it, I mean, it's a, you know, tiny stand in for you know, maybe actually knowing someone Muslim. Were you a superhero fan prior to a little bit like I remember having X-Men cards growing up <laughs> yeah. and um, I, I, you know, had some comic books growing up, but not like not nothing crazy, crazy. So it was definitely a, a deep dive into that world, which I've come to really appreciate, man, the fans of these superheroes are so amazing and dedicated and they know every detail and uh yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade them for any other fans. They're great. They're great. <laughs> what was your first Comic Con experience like? Ooh, um, very overwhelming. It's a very overwhelming thing, um, but fun also. I don't know. I'm I'm a bit of an introvert, so I just remember after I guess it was two days. Two days after two days, I think I had to just like lay down for like seven days, and I don't think I even could because I started. Yeah, that was actually the very very weird thing is I went to Comic Con before I was before I had premiered on the show. So I went to Comic Con and I think I started filming the next week. So it was very very weird <laughs> for me and for everyone who was like. Yeah, she's gonna be on the show. We don't know her at all, but she's she's on the show. Trust us, you know she's coming. Um, but yeah, it was fun. It was fun, weird, but fun. <laughs> I love that. I mean, it's it's very true about the fans. I mean, very dedicated. It's it's almost somewhat like uh, soap fans. They they really have a passion for it. Yeah, incredibly. Uh, my friend Alina sent me a question. She said, "Do you think the Zari?" to John relationship ever worked. She says that her kid thinks it did, but my friend thinks it came out of nowhere and made no sense and was curious what your feelings on the subject were. Um, fair, I say fair on both counts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's hard for, it's obviously hard for me to like see it from the outside. I think, 
selfishly Matt Ryan, who played Constantine on the show, Matt and I love each other. And we um, were both kind of theater nerds and we would sort of nerd out together on set. So I welcomed the opportunity to like spend more time with him because of uh, the creation of that relationship. And it was, it was kind of fun to um, the characters were, you know, diametrically opposed, very, 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 very different types. So that is always fun. There's like a friction that comes with that. Whether it worked or not, you know. I'm sure you, I'm sure you get both sides. Like, <laughs> both, you know, here you have two people in the same family. One, you know, believed it, the other didn't, you know. Yeah. And, and that's the great thing about watching anything. I think you you walk away with two different perspectives. Yes, totally subjective. I had another relationship on the show. It felt like some people, actually, sort of a third relationship. It felt like people were like team, you know, <laughs> one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> You, you do always have that a, a, a team. That's so funny. When you look back on those five years, what you know, what comes to mind? What stands out for you? You know what? I think I think the reason, one of the reasons that I'm an actor is because I I like being in community with people to create either theater or television. And I had had the experience prior to Legends of being in a rehearsal process through theater where you feel that family thing come together. And it's short often. And, um, you know, after it's done, sometimes it dissipates and, you know, you don't see that person ever again. But that, that thing that happens during the process, that community family thing. I think that's what I'm always chasing. And I hadn't ever felt that really on television, mostly because, um, sorry, there's a, there's a cat moving around. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Good guy. You're good. You're good. Um, I hadn't felt that because I hadn't had that much time, you know, um, to, to be with one group of people and legends afforded that. So if like, we really, I mean, a couple of years in, we were like really a family and not just the cast, the crew, like I loved our crew. I loved, you know, the directors would often repeat, like it was just, it felt so nice to be, to kind of get rid of all the things that um, might be a distraction, like, you know, being in a new environment. Oh, I don't know this person. Uh, like all those things that can, you know, cause nervousness or distraction. Um, that was, that was gone. So we could just sort of focus on the work, focus on having fun. Uh, we laughed really, really hard. It was a very absurd show in the best of ways. Every script was bananas every script was different I mean we were a time traveling superhero show like it's it, it, it defies all categorization and um and it did and our writers like went there and our showrunner went there um and and I think everybody was game so it was so yeah ultimately very very long answer to your question is uh it was great because I I, I got like got to feel that family thing over a long period of time and, and, you know, make our fun, silly show together. Do you have desire to do anything else within the medium uh, besides acting? Do you want to direct? Do you write? Um, I don't write. I, I do. I more and more have, um, like I have opinions. I have, uh, <laughs> My thoughts and feelings that I would like to express, not just as an actor. And um, yeah, I have an interest in producing. I have an interest in directing, maybe um, especially theater, actually. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. I'm sort of exploring what I think the next phase of my artistic creative life is. Um, but I... 
you know, I always joke that I'm like always eternally looking for like a different career because acting is so hard. But even when I think about doing other things, they're all artistic things. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go become a photographer. Oh, I'll, I'll focus on painting. And, you know, my the, the closest people to me in my life will be like, you know, that like those things are very hard, too. You're not like going to make money being a photographer. I'm like, oh, no, I know it's not about money. But um, so, yes. All that to say, I, I am, I'm interested in a lot of things. It's trying to figure out, um, trying to like figure out where I fit and who I fit with. Cause I think that's actually a big piece of it too, is like collaborating and connecting with the right people that want to, you know, create the things that I'm interested in. Do you feel more home on stage or in front of the camera? Stage. So. Yeah. I had a feeling that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of stage, December 2024, coming to Broadway in English. Tell us about English. You talked a little bit at the beginning, but tell us about the character you play. Um, yeah, the character's name is Elham, and uh, she is this very uh, outspoken, somewhat petulant student in this Tuffle class who... Uh, resents having to learn English in order to pursue her next, you know, field of study, which in her case is um, uh, going to medical school. And she, yeah, she butts heads with the the teacher of the class, and she's very bad at English too. But she's she it's a it's a really wonderfully written character and a wonderfully written play by Sanas Tusi. Um because she's like in this character, she's encapsulated sort of two things that can't exist, which is which creates the drama of it. Someone who is striving to be the best, again, the number one student in the class, and someone who's very bad at this particular thing, English. Um and and it is the thing that she needs to master in order to um, go to medical school, but also actually to get out of the country. There's there's sort of, you know, the um, uh, umbrella also of, of what is happening politically, socially um, in Iran, which is that a lot of people do leave um, to pursue studies and to pursue... Um, a life with like a little bit more freedom. Again, some people, some people would perceive it that way. I don't want to, I don't want to um, make any sweeping generalizations. Um, so yeah, it's a really beautiful play. It's very, interestingly, I think it's actually quite cinematic. It, it, especially the way our, our director directed it, um, Knut Adams. Uh, and I, I hope, I hope this will, you know, be maintained as we, go into a bigger space for Broadway but there he he was really interested in like having these quiet moments that almost felt cinematic um in inside of what is you know a play um and yeah it's 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 lovely everyone should see it it's not like just for people who you know are uh immigrants to this country I think there's something really universal and in, in what it is to to try to fit in and try to strive for something and fall short or when you do achieve it like the the you know getting your goal and then it may be feeling different than you thought it would we all try to fit that. in black yeah. black white brown gay straight jewish yeah. christian muslim all we all try to fit in somewhere yeah um what does the anticipation of coming to broadway feel like um, honestly, it doesn't feel very real because it's so far away. <laughs> um, so, you know, as an actor, you're just trying to, uh, to I'm hoping to work between now and then. And uh, it's very exciting. It's, it's almost hard for me to believe it's happening until it happens. And um, that's my like Persian, I think, uh, <laughs> superstitious part of me too but um yes I'm 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 honestly just so so thrilled and so thrilled that so many more people get to see it because we initially I think we only the show ran for 
I don't know, three or four weeks or something. So I'm just thrilled that more people are going to get an opportunity to see it. Has that been a dream, Broadway, for you? Sure. I mean, you know, at some point when I realized, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not like a good enough musical theater performer. I was like, <laughs> oh, I guess, I guess Broadway is sort of not um, in the cards for me. And I'm thrilled. I'm, you know, I, I of course, it's a dream. And also at some point, I think I put that dream on a shelf. And to get to do this play on Broadway, yeah, that's what feels meaningful because the play feels so meaningful, you know? When did you find your sort of uh, political voice speaking up about things that matter to you? Do you, do you feel there was a moment that you... I've always had it, I think, because my parents had it. I, mm -hmm. I think I understood. I remember going with my mom when I was very, very young, you know, seven, seven, eight years old, to Amnesty International meetings where um, I would help her write letters um, for political prisoners. So that that was sort of in me very early. And my parents were revolutionaries. Like they were um, part of the revolution that happened in 79 in Iran that obviously went very awry. But um, I think I think a lot of that is in my blood. Um, and unfortunately, uh, I would say the events of the last decade in America have, have and, 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 and being an artist and like seeing again, how we're represented in um, in media and 9-11, of course. Like all of that, I think, honed and sharpened my, my politics and also my desire to speak out about it. And then you add social media into the mix and there we go. Like that's, uh, that becomes a conduit for all of that for better and worse. And I think a lot of times for worse, um, these days I'm really, I, I, I'm grappling with how helpful or hurtful the social media engagement is. Um, and it's a balancing act. It's totally a balancing act. I think at the end of the day, I would much rather like sit across the table from someone, you know, Michelle Obama says it's hard to hate close up. I think I'm, saying that correctly and um, I think that's true and I think it's really easy to hate on social media with that it is I also distance. don't know what what we're seeing is fact makes it very difficult to know what is important it was interesting because I, I you know I should have thought of it uh 9-11 was it difficult for you after 9-11 personally um did you feel people looking at you differently at that time specifically? Um, I was, I think weirdly because of the timing of it, I was sort of shielded because I was just entering college. And I think if I had been out in the professional world, I would have felt it more. I still felt it. I, I don't think I really understood, actually probably until as the world turns, the impacts of uh, 9 11 as it applies to our um, entertainment. And I, uh, you know, I obviously auditioned or, audition or did not audition, passed on a lot of things even early in my career that were like terrorist, terrorist wife, terrorist sister. To, you know, there was a lot of that for a long time. And it's better, but there's still. Now it's now it's sort of like a somewhat nuanced version of that, but um, I think the legacy of that very much continues. Hmm. It's it, yeah, it's so hard. You know, it really is. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I wish there was a way to make it easier for for all of us. You yeah. know, it, yeah. it 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 is something. Um, uh, this person's screen name is Pizza Planet Claus Caleb. Says Tala, I'm a huge fan of yours. Between a soap TV show from As the World Turns to Legends of Tomorrow, which character you loved more playing? I assume uh, Zar Zari. Zari. Yeah, yeah. Zari. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I did love playing Zari. And I got to play two versions of her. So I really, when I got bored of one, I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, do you have a dream role you'd love to play on stage? Um, yes, there's a few. Uh, Shay in, in the world of Shakespeare, Rosalind, um, Cleopatra. Iago, there's just some parts that I love. Um, Is Shakespeare a big love of yours? I have a lot of appreciation for Shakespeare and I think there's no, no writing that I've ever read that reveals itself more richly as you dive into it. Um, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm in any way like a natural or a, you know, aficionado at it, but I, I have a lot of appreciation for it. And any, I think any opportunity to work on it is very expansive. So I hope I get to do more of it. And then also, I mean, I, I love Hedda Gabler or Nora from A Doll's House. Those are all great, great parts. And is there I don't something... think anybody would ever cast me in, um, you know, Arthur Miller, but also like Arthur, like I, I've always loved Arthur Miller plays. Those are, that's also where I like first fell in love with theater, reading those plays, reading Tennessee Williams, you know. And did you read those in high school? I did it, but, um, you know, some of it I read in college, but uh, I, I read a lot of them in high school with that, that teacher mentor who I was like, oh my God. I, I think so Arthur Miller was so big in high school. Cause I yeah, Arthur Miller was big in high school. I don't, is there a reason for that? Cause I was talking to another actor last week who said, you know, he did the crucible and I think I did the crucible in high school. <laughs> you know, I did all my sons. So we were at least doing like the less. <laughs> but yeah, I'm curious, like, why is it Arthur Miller? You know, why is he getting? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I Yeah, we were really, I, I remember that teacher that I mentioned taking us, we all went to DC and met Arthur Miller. He was a very old man at that point and we met him. Oh, that must yeah, be cool. Like, yeah, it was like, um, uh, it was like the Lincoln Center performing for the art sets in New York. I don't know. I don't, yeah, it was, it was somewhere I think in DC, but yeah, I don't know. Arthur Miller. <laughs> That's so I just want to see teenagers like portraying these like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> downtrodden characters. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, I, I it's very that... good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, do you recall your first Broadway show? <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it was Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably that family trip to New York or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think actually it was like a it was like a class trip and it was Phantom. We saw Phantom, the chandelier, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. I love that. Um, Tommy says, Tali, you look great. Um, Thanks, Tommy. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my wait, I was gonna ask cat. About... My little kitty cat's being so good. And there's another Both of them. There. I know. I was I I didn't know how it would go, but they've been very quiet, thank God. Very, very quiet. Um I totally, uh, I was going to ask a bro. Oh, is there something you've seen recently that you would recommend to anybody that you loved? Oh, great question. Um, you know what? I will plug my friend Chris Diaz, who wrote the book for Hell's Kitchen with Alicia Keys. I saw it at the public. It's moving to Broadway. It's just a real beautiful love letter to New York. I loved it. My sister and brother-in-law went on Sunday. They highly oh. recommended it. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. yeah, it's really, it's really sweet. And um, the actor that they have playing young Alicia Keys, I think Allie is her name in the, in the show. She's never been on, like it's her first show ever. She's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I mean, talk about a... Yeah. Great music. <laughs> Great music. I mean, Talk listen, about if you're going to do a powerful music, woman, like I want to listen to those songs. Powerful woman, you know, a woman who stands up for what's right. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Talia, such a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much me. for doing this. Stay here while I sign off, okay? Okay. 
Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank you to Talia Ash for spending the hour. Don't miss Talia on Broadway this December. Keep an eye out for the Roundabout Theater Company's uh, ticket information when it goes on sale. Please join us on Friday for a One Life to Live reunion as we go back to 1988 and 1888 with Brenda Brock, John Loprano, and Loita Chappelle Woods. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can do so down below. Turn on notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And if you like to download audio versions, search The Locker Room on your favorite streaming platform. Have a great afternoon, everybody. I will see you on Friday.